How are we doing, everybody? And welcome to tonight's show. I um, have to apologize. I'm still rocking the deep sea fisherman look this evening. It is absolutely freezing in Scotland, and this is where we're at. And I'm very pleased to say that we're joined once again with our previous panel members, Kim and Christina. <coughs> So a big welcome to them. And just before we get started tonight, I just want to thank everybody for uh, the support for this series. And I think um, as we continue with it, it's just as confusing now as it was then. And, you know, I want to thank you guys for coming back and, and joining us. And uh, Christina and Kim, welcome back. Kim, how are you doing today? I know you've got some big news for us and we'll get to that. But how how's things been since uh, since the last time you were on the show? It's been good. It's been really good. Good. No, I'm glad. Um, and Christina, how are you? Oh, I'm great. Yeah, how have you been? I've been very well. I've been very well. Uh, Aiko, you've told me that there's an important snap. Can you re-snap me so your snap jumps to the top of all these snaps? If you wouldn't mind. And that would be great. And uh, yeah, just before we get started, thank you, everybody. If you want to become a channel member or a Patreon, the links are in description. Please find all the links for the channel, live streams and videos and ways you can support us in the link tree. Now, big evening for uh, for everyone. And just before we get stuck in, I just want to say a quick hello to everyone who's out there. Theo, Taryn, Vanda, AB, Knowledge, Jen, Nikki, Brittany, Christina, Amy, Glenn, oh, there's everybody, Nyla, Lavina, Lidl, John's here, Randy, Michelle, Rainy, Wolfie, Riversong, Chrissy, Dragon, Matt, Gabby, it's all kicking off, Brittany's here too, and Denise, what is happening, everyone, okay, so, as you can tell by the title, there is some new evidence, and who better to tell us about that than Kim herself, so Kim, do you want to, do you want to put us out of our misery, and I'll bring up that image, and you can tell us, uh, what it is we're looking at okay okay take the floor some people um who follow the site all the time have seen me comment on different things and ask them is is this blood is that blood and what i found like maybe less than a week ago was i was tinkering around zooming things up and this particular picture i pulled up where the door handle and the driver's side is. And if you zoom in on that, that's actually blood. And, uh-huh. And, and I was not aware of that until just the other day. And not only is there blood on the handle, but I believe there's also blood on that steering wheel. And, when I got my car back, or Jalee's car back, they washed that blood off. That blood's gone. But these are their pictures, and there's that blood up, up a little bit higher. There. Mm hmm Yeah, it's still fuzzy, but other people that have posted pictures where they've like messed with the collar and whatnot, it is still there. It, it's blood. What that means is, that means that after my daughter was dead, the person that was actually driving her car had gotten out of that car and touched my daughter and got back in that car and drove off with her vehicle. That's it. That is the last thing I needed. That's it. There's no way Julia's blood got on that handle unless somebody was driving that car. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, 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 no. They're saying she went out the passenger window. So there should be no blood on any part of the front of the car. Mm 
Mm-hmm. No. No. To them, to to the picture that I posted, yeah, it, she was run over. And their and their little animation, she never hit the ground until she fell off her trunk. So basically what I think happened, because people have been asking me, I think that um, for one reason or another, Julia either got out of the car or was made to get out of the car. And the person driving the car took off, turned the vehicle around, came back. And for whatever reason, Julia was struck with the car. And when they said in their initial reports that she was struck and probably pinned between the car and the guardrail, that is possible. And I think at that point, the person driving the car realized that her, you know, she's dead, had gone out and attempted to pull her off of the corner of the car. Okay. Realized they couldn't. They got back in the car. And as they took off, you know, where the skid marks come in, Julia's leg at that point was already snapped in half. All that was holding Julia's leg together was the skin on the back of her knee. Oh, man. And I believe because her leg was broke, that's what was bent, and she got pulled under the car. The skid marks going across to the, to the passing lane, that is Julia's body, and it is the cut going across the chest, it's leaving all that blood. Once they got to the first resting place, that's when the car actually went over her. And then they drove that car down as far as they could on the rims. Okay, yeah. And pulled it to the side. Yeah, I 100% agree. Yeah, that sounds way more plausible. 100%. And... I mentioned last time I was talking about a burn. They look like a burn. There, um, on her, her right leg is the one. Let me let me think. No, it's her left leg. Her left leg is the one that is snapped, but her right ankle is also broke. It's not broke completely in half, but it's broke, and it also has a cut, like something slit across her ankle. And above that is what looks to me like a burn, and I'm questioning if it was her muffler on her car. I, I was just going to say that her exhaust, because the exhaust line that runs all the way under your car is very, very hot. And that's why they put the cap on the back so you don't burn yourself. And the blood that is under Julia's car that I talk about is under the front portion, the, the passenger half, and it is in the wheel well. And it is going under and even a little bit that is splattered on top of the muffler. And the idiot that tried to wash it didn't think that, you know, maybe it splattered someplace where you can't see. Because it's also in the wheel well up, like on the side of the fender, inside of the fender. Do you understand what I'm talking about? At the yeah. top part where the wheel would be, it's up in there. Well, that's that's the part I was referring to because that's mm -hmm. that's confusing because that's that I mean it, going going by the official report it makes no sense I mean it makes no sense whatsoever no. that there should be blood there at all and um, yeah that and I see the blood on the inside mm -hmm. it makes even less sense and just to, I. I I'm sure this isn't everybody, but you just got to remember as well, in America, you're driving the, the, the steering wheels on the other side of the road for anybody in the UK who's just just mm -hmm. keep that in mind when you're you're looking at the driver's seat in this image, not the passenger seat, just uh, so everybody knows. Um, but just... And you know what really what really, really pisses me off about all this is, is this person actually touched my daughter, her dead, decapitated body. And then had the, you know, just drives off and lives their life like they don't have a care in the world. See, now. Uh, How do you do that? How do you see something like that? 
Well, I think, it, you, you, yeah, I was just going to say, you need to assess the stability of the mindset. I mean, for 100%. And it's terrifying to, to think of reasons why that wouldn't affect somebody. Uh, because... I don't I don't understand how anybody could have processed thoughts and got in a car and drove off and like you say wiped their hands clean and thrown a hat because um, mm-hmm. that made perfect sense as well I swear I swear I think they tried when they tried to pull her off the car that is when um, the clothes came off because when Julia was found Julia's arms and hands were above her head they were stretched out above her head and if somebody's pulling on your clothes, they're going to come off in that direction and your arms go in the air. Oh, man. Yeah, that, that does make sense, yeah. Obviously, yeah. I, I mean, obviously it doesn't take a genius to work out that if this has all been covered up and this has all been washed under the carpet, there, there must have been some reason or some connection to the police force for that to happen. It doesn't take a, a genius mm-hmm. to, to work that out. And do you think this is a series of unfortunate events that weren't preordained that played out over an evening or do you think this was something sort of more premeditated and darker than that you know I, I i go back and forth because there's you know a difference between first degree and second degree murder but i looked up different you know the definition and There's nothing that shows that that car had tried to avoid her. There's no, you know, brakes where they, you know, anybody slammed on the brakes. There's no, um, how do I put it? When you drive off and you know you've done something like this and then you, you know, don't come forward. There was a fight. Before this happened, Tobby described Julia's last phone call as Julia being hysterical. You know, she's sitting there and let's say if it was this person calling them all kinds of filthy names in front of them. You know, I mean, there's just a lot to it. Absolutely. And like we said um, on the last show, as far as we know, uh, Julia never had her keys. No, she didn't have her keys. Because I, I was looking over Tobby's statement, and the last time that she talked to her, when Julia said, I'll tell you when I get there, that was also the time that she was telling her to give her her keys. Yeah. Yeah, and something interesting that I saw on this that you had actually posted on the Facebook page was that uh, according to the timeline, uh, mm-hmm. Kristen had placed herself with Julia while they were at McDonald's. Well, well get this. It, yeah. Yeah, because she is, quoted exactly what she said to Talby on the phone. Uh huh. She's the and, only one that quoted that. Mm hmm. And the thing is, is I'm going to eventually post the, because um, Julia's phone and Tobby's, they check their cell phone records and got the pings off of the towers and these kids claim that they dropped Julia off at a location off of 7th Street and the locals will know what I'm talking about but when Julia made that phone call to Tobby according to those cell phone records and the pings Julia's car was actually on the interstate and she was past the entrance to Route 2 which means she was very close to where she actually died. She was not across town where they claimed they dropped her off. I mean, aren't cell phone tower things like concrete evidence in court? Yeah, I was, I was, I was just about to mention that. And have you, has anybody made up any visuals just to show, you know, a map of the area where the pings have been shown. Oh, I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm going to post that. Like, if you need any help with that, just let me know. I'd, I'd rather you talk me through it if I was going to do anything like that. Because having a visual like that is really going to help, and you know, this whole thing be understood. Where officially, when I say officially, I mean you know what the police have published officially what's been said as to where the location is and then where the evidence points to everything is i think it's just it's such a massive massive bundle it's it's 
I really, uh, I really am. Like I say, if you need any help with that, I'm more than help, happy to, 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 to help you with that, Kim. Thank you. So, Christina, what do you think about the, the blood on the inside of the door? Do you... Have yeah, any, you I, I, I 100% I agree with Kim. The thing is, is uh, there would, yeah, there would be no reason for that. According to their, you know, uh, description of what the police think happened, that would be impossible. Um, mm -hmm. The blood in the wheel well, the whole thing just shows. I mean, it's just... Oh, it's so frustrating, especially because I've seen more than a fair share of accidents. This would have never flown. You know what I'm saying? Like this theory. Yeah, remind us, remind us again what your. Uh... Let me tell you what their official story was to us in the meeting. Of course. Because it's even better. Okay. It's better than what you've been hearing just just while you're going to touch they on that would them. you also just touch on how the police reacted to you pushing further questioning but you can touch on your point first they um told us that the when Julia hit this guardrail that her airbag deployed that the force of that actually lifted her up out of the seat mm -hmm and help catapult her to the other side of the car without touching anything on her seat that she actually hit that front windshield on the passenger side first then kind of ricocheted off of that and went out that window went over and her head hit the guardrail and instead of going over the guardrail that mm -hmm. she actually flipped back and brett pickens said from end to end. So she actually went ahead of her car and he said over her car and possibly at one time spinning and <laughs> said she landed on the trunk where it, her car just yeah. for some reason went and, to left. Yeah. And there are no dents, which is right. ironic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. None. And um, fell off her trunk and landed in the passing lane then her car instead of going over into the median you know straight shot it corrected itself and then went back over to the guardrail and coasted down the guardrail and actually around a turn like a curve that's not a straight shot where they found her car it had to go around a curve yeah just and um, hug that guardrail yeah, yeah that's that's another another head that's another one of those moments so you just are left scratching your head as to how the police can think this is logical, mm -hmm. you know. And when we were in that meeting, once I asked about the clothes, because see, there were so many leaks in that department. I knew about, I knew Julia was decapitated probably within 30 to 60 days after it happened. Somebody told me. And I knew they were going to close the case June prior to when they did. And... I knew about the clothes. I, I didn't know how they were stacked, but somebody told me, ask him about the clothes, ask him about her shirt. And as soon as I asked him that in the meeting, that was it. Brett Pickens wanted up and out of there. He had other things to do. Everybody was kind of scuffling around. You know, they wanted to finish that meeting. My dad wanted to ask questions. They told him, you had your chance. I read the transcripts. Terrible. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. you guys were literally pushed out that door. Like, okay, yeah, you've had, you've had your time. Bye. Yeah. Which is Terrible. obviously absolutely shocking to to have gone through what you went through, and then to have that level of disrespect from the people that are meant to be fighting for justice. Let me tell you the shady part about all this was. That's not the shady the part. <laughs> no. Okay, no. let's get into the meat, Kim. Let's do this. <laughs> The shady part is Jeff Sandy was the sheriff at the time this was investigated. And in June, when I heard that it was going to be closed, that they were going to say that it was an accident, um, is the same month that I talked to him. And he told me, I promise you, this case will be handled before I get out of office. And I thought that was so weird because elections were coming up. But it, they hadn't come up yet. So how did he know he wouldn't be in office? Although 
the man he was running against is a really nice guy. You know, he's passed away by now, but he um, he told me it would be taken care of. And they had it all planned out. I mean, it was done. It was, they were done. In, in December 18th, I looked at a paper today, and in December 18th, they already had it down that she flew out the car. So basically, I'm saying Jeff Sandy made sure that case was closed before he got out of office. And the day we had our meeting, the new sheriff was out of town at a funeral. They set that up, that he would be out of wow. town at a funeral. And you know who Jeff Sandy is now? Jeff Sandy has a state position. He works for the governor. Yeah. The governor hired him into a state position. So the governor's got this shady, yeah. Mm -hmm. Government. <laughs> yep. That's crazy. Like, mm -hmm. and well, they yeah, decided, I mean, just, just they to decided go... at the scene what had happened. You could just tell. Mm -hmm. They had no intention on ever, <laughs> no. ever trying and, and to people solve think this. they did this long investigation. Mm -mm. They did not do a long, thorough investigation. They sent that car off like a week after it happened. And once it was at the lab and they collected everything, they sent it back, right? And the sheriff's department put it out in the elements. Okay, mm -hmm. didn't want to cover. Oh yeah, with no cover. You had to buy the mm -hmm. cover. Mm -hmm. We had to buy the cover, and my dad had to keep telling him, you know, call him and say, "Hey, the cover came off. Can you go back out and put the cover on?" On the now, car. Keep in mind, they, yeah. Yes, they but did this not. Is, put this is this is evidence, There are pictures right? that she. Yeah, there are pictures pictures that she has on the Facebook page that show the car where the wind has blown the cover off, and it's wow. just completely. But and what you know people, the weather there is crazy. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> but what people don't realize is is the lab had those those samples to test the car sitting out in the elements but the lab did not have a letter of consumption to test this stuff for approximately five to six months after it happened the district attorney who is now a judge did not take the time to send the proper paperwork so the things can be tested so they don't know what those tests are going to say but they've stuck that evidence out in, you know, out in their impound yard without any protection. Wow. That's just the height, obviously the height of negligence. But again, it's one of the, see if it was just that, if it was, if, if everything you just said wasn't, wasn't a factor and it was just the, the you know if it was just the clothes and just them ignoring the cover blowing off the car you'd be like that's one too many coincidences one too many f things that are fishy but every element of this every step that uh, uh, that since the police have been involved seems to have been mm -hmm. cover up or smear or f uh, you know false reality it just it's just massive that's what I said the other night I said it was big Jeez. Yeah, I mean, it, when well, you start I, I, when you start bringing, you know, it's, it's okay when you start bringing in judges and promotions and dates that are set so that people are in and out of office and sheriffs are out of town. It is just like, whoa, what are we? What are we dealing with right now? What what actually mm -hmm. is this? You know, mm -hmm. because it. it it just gets more and more confusing and more and more the rabbit hole just doesn't end kim i'm sorry it's just it's it's overwhelming and it must be overwhelming for you and it's incredible how far you and your community have come with all of it uh, i feel mm -hmm. like i'm learning as we go because there's just so much like literally years of investigating and it just doesn't make sense. The blood on the inside of the door that you've shown us this evening doesn't make sense. The the blood under the wheel doesn't make sense. None of it does the stories. And I'm, I'd be very interested to, to see, you know, on a map where the cell pings came from and where the police said everything was. And I think once we start seeing information as visuals, people are going to be it's going to be undeniable for people because they're going to be staring at the the red circles on the map in the face if that makes sense but mm -hmm. I, when when people have got to try and sift through tons of information it can be mind-boggling and is there any points that you feel that still need sort of cleared up and and sort of uh, emphasized more that are in the official report that aren't 
adding up with you obviously we've got the... oh my god there's okay. so many okay uh, it's not just one thing i mean they dropped the ball or purposely you know hid stuff from i i would say based on what's in the the case files the book they gave up on my daughter around january they totally gave up it from that point it went from trying to find out who did this this and this to trying to prove she was driving i mean one of the detectives camille waldron she was so desperate to prove delia was driving the pictures i posted today on my facebook page for her those are pictures of Julia's hair, her upper part of her head, and they're glowing, okay, so people can't really see her scalp or anything, but they're glowing, and there's little particles in it, Okay. and Camille asked the lab tech if that was consistent with um, the airbag dust, which, you know, I don't know what that means, because you can be a passenger and still have airbag dust on you. But she asked the, the tech that, and she said, we don't have a test for airbag dust. There's not one that we're aware of. So she said, well, do you know anybody that can? And she said, well, try this lab. So Camille would try another lab. And then finally, the third lab, they told her, they said, look, you're better off to just look for, you know, DNA on the airbag because you can't test that. You can't determine what, you know, if it matches another vehicle or whatnot. Okay. So there was no DNA on that airbag. None. And I don't know anything about airbags, but do they go completely flat after they deploy? Because you can see at the scene that it's completely flat. Well, I'll be honest with you. I've only ever seen them in movies, and they don't ever seem to deflate in the movies. Well, I actually got hit by one. Okay. I had a seizure. I had a seizure while driving. Oh, jeez. Okay. I was wearing a seatbelt, but uh, I ended up hitting a brick uh, posted mailbox and uh, my airbag hit me and yeah they do they do deploy or they do flatten so that way the emergency workers can access the people quickly so yeah they they puff out real fast and it hurts and it usually can sometimes uh, cause a lot of uh, internal bleeding. I had to stay in the hospital, for instance, for three days to make sure to be monitored that I didn't have any internal bleeding from the airbag. So, uh, and you get bruised and everything. But yeah, they do go down fairly quickly. It's not something okay. that normally... Uh, I, you yeah. just, I think I now have like a fear of airbags. Like that sounds terrible. Oh, they're terrible. They're terrible. And they, they can, if you sit too close to them, they could actually burn you. Well, that's, uh, it's actually a controlled explosion that goes off to yeah. release an airbag. It's the only thing that can uh, fill the bag f in the millisecond before your head goes into the into the steering yeah. wheel. It's crazy. Um, but, <coughs> <coughs> yeah, the airbag dust is something people are asking about. I mean, so just just to go over the mishandling of the car we had the the non they, they never kept it covered they washed the car which is ludicrous they you know covered up areas inside where they said there wasn't blood there was the the cd ejecting as well which was um something that was questioned the the lack of airbag dust and did you ever confirm like the, the there was some i think somebody had questioned that the guardrails and the the scratches on the side of the car um, at one point weren't the same height or something like that. Was that quickly debunked? And is there anything else? Well, my dad had. I posted um, yesterday a picture because I I told everybody when I first started posting them that the depth of those um, marks on the passenger side you couldn't you could the, the pictures didn't justify that. So my dad held a five inch can up to one of those and it's the one on the front corner of the car and you can see that it is clearly oh i think we lost you a bit there kim are you still there christina are you still there yeah i'm still here okay it might just be uh a wee drop again like some bad connection we drop a connection for uh, kim there we'll give we'll give kim a chance just to come back uh but yeah solway firth just saying washed away evidence uh they washed the car yeah they washed the car uh and 
uh, I'm not being funny, but when, like I say, there's there's so much to this that doesn't make any sense unless we're talking about a cover up. It only makes sense when you start considering it as a cover up because why would they wash the car? Why would they cover up blood? Why would the the the, the DNA of the inside of the car uh, be so suspicious when those tests came came back? It's just it it just all it's just too weird. It's too much. Yeah, and if it's not a cov- if it's not a cover up, it's gross negligence and mishandling of evidence. And yeah. somebody should be held responsible, in my opinion. For absolutely, that. absolutely, they should. In fact, it wouldn't uh, even be a a, mishan- a gross negligence mishandling of evidence. It would be all the evidence mishandling of all of the evidence. It's not it, that this is the thing. But even then, mishandling evidence isn't like washing the car. That's like right. That's <laughs> that's. Oh, I was just devil's advocate there, and that was being generous, you know. No, to the absolutely. Police, but yeah, I mean, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. I mean it. You just can't have that many unfortunate events that just so happen to happen. Right. And another thing that uh, Tim had pointed out on on, uh, the glass aspect, there was no glass on the road. So if she flew out of the window, where the glass is on the inside of the vehicle. Oh, yes. As if somebody had punched, had had either not, you know, used something to break the glass yeah, in. Yeah, I'm with you. And I read somebody out there, because there are a lot of videos on this on YouTube, um, and another person had a theory that maybe she had locked herself in the car and they punched out the oh. glass to get her out. Oh. And I thought, wow, that's actually that, plausible. Pl- that is super. Kim, just in case you can hear us, we cannot hear you. Uh, just to let, just so you know, uh, what you might want to do is disconnect and leave the the stream, and then reconnect and join the stream, and that usually clears up any bugs. There we go. Okay, excellent. Ah, oh, poor Kim. She'll have been, she'll oh. have been chatting there. <laughs> <I> feel bad. <laughs> yeah, it, it it's it happens. It's uh, it's just the way it goes with the internet software sometimes. But like, it's. It's so confusing. Well, and again, we're... Was, on you go, Christina. Yeah, carry on. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, was the emergency brake pulled? That's a question that I still have. Uh, I've had read different things about that. But uh, was the car just rested and kind of in neutral on the well, side of the road? Or was the Kim, e-brake pulled? Yeah. Yeah, Kim, sorry. We couldn't hear you replying uh, to, to there. But Christina had, had said something interesting about... There was no glass from the passenger side window found on the street. Can you confirm that, if or what, or was it on the inside? And if it was on the inside and the doors were locked, could it be possible that um, Julia locked herself in the car and someone smashed that window to get her out of the car? It the there was no glass outside of the car. My dad did not see any, and neither did those truck drivers. But Brett Pickens says there was the cop okay. in the meeting but um there wasn't there's none in the pictures you can tell by that as far as julia being locked in the car um no she wouldn't do that i can't okay. see her doing that julia was not the kind of person that was afraid of anyone really okay okay and there really there was absolutely no glass that i'm aware of on the passenger seat which is okay. weird so the window just Personally, evaporated. Think... Just another case of evaporating windows, Kim. Is that what basically we're we're working with here? Yeah, could okay. be. Um, what I think happened was I think that that window was broke when nobody was in the car, and I think that the front window was cracked on the outside mm-hmm. by a guy, and um, that also happened when nobody was in the car. And I think it probably happened because there was some, there was in the, you're going to see in the transcripts or in the reports, the case reports, there was an issue where somebody had lost a key and a phone. So I think they were looking for a key and a phone and that's how that got busted. Okay. Oh, okay. 
And then was the emergency brake pulled or was it just a neutral? No, it was actually, it was in drive. It was in drive. It was just it resting was up against the guardrail enough to where it couldn't uh -huh. go forward anymore. Okay. Uh, hmm. How did it turn the corner? Like, how did it, yeah. how did it turn the corner? This is what I don't understand. Like, if, if no one's in the they car. They will tell you. Just perfectly, I, just I turn the, just, just, it, it's just too much. There's too, there's too much fishiness. And mm -hmm. everyone lost their mind when we said that they washed the car, uh, Kim, in the side chat, just so you know. Um, so it's not just us that thinks that's weird. That's, you know, that's. Yeah, now they did, they did vacuum the car on the passenger side for evidence okay that was done for evidence but when i say they wash the car i mean there is nothing on the outside body of that car and they were so desperate to try to convince us i mean okay they staged the car when we picked it up when we picked it up they had a piece of glass on the passenger side they had left out the CD on the CD player, like they claim it was when they found it, and they busted the A-frame trying to prove to us that she went out that window. Now, that A-frame wasn't busted when we had that meeting, or they would have brought that up at the meeting. Do you see what I'm saying? They yeah. would have said she went out that window, and we know because of the A-frame. That, that A-frame is busted. Just uh, what what do you feel is the next move for you, Kim? Like what what where can we? All go? I need is a lawyer. Okay. I need a lawyer, a lawyer, or somebody that's up politically high because. I mean, how can you not say that Leah's blood on that handle in the car and on the steering wheel isn't proof that somebody else was driving? Well, yeah. I mean, it, it's. It would have and had to have been someone with, else, yeah. Yeah, and you put that with blood under the car and blood on, you know, and tissue under the car. Oh, the, the blood under that wheel arch and the blood on the inside is surely is enough to completely throw the, the original report out the window. Mm-hmm. Now, the one thing I won't understand totally is how it actually how she went up that guardrail and with the clothes i mean i believe the clothes were torn off by the person as they're trying to pull her off the car but people ask me about the clothes you wanted to know about what the clothes were like yes yeah okay the these jeans the inside thigh area was cut like ripped in both legs the upper thigh up high the left leg front of the pants was tore out around above the knee area and then below almost to the ankle but her ankle down there was not really damaged I don't understand why it was tore down there her right pants leg in the front upper leg had a tear and in the back upper leg had a tear and on the outside of that same leg down at the bottom the seam was ripped her bra and i'll go with the coat first the coat had no tears on the outside at all and the only thing that was torn was where the hood was apparently pulled off either by a post or by somebody and you can see like where the material is frayed, where the hood was. The But the outside has no damage whatsoever, just blood in various spots. And the inside, her right armpit, that material is cut. But the left armpit is not. But when you get to the shirt, the front left portion, it's a tank top like a spaghetti strap flowy <coughs> at the at the left portion above the breast were two small tears but the whole left side of it was ripped out and, and then with her bra 
the whole the left side of her bra was ripped it was still hooked together but the bra and i mean that's a hard place to you know pull apart a woman will tell you you know this yeah, the absolutely. hooks will give before that part of the bra but the left portion under the armpit was tore off of the cup and there was blood that was going down both cups of the bra on the inside of the jacket there was heavy blood around the neck portion and then it tapered off but in a swoosh like a like if something rubbed against it and it got lighter as it went down okay but um that's that's and the thing is is her body even though there were these rips on the left hand side in her armpit area of her clothes she didn't have any damage to her left armpit but her right armpit did have an serious like a deep cut which would explain the coat having the cut in the material so, what, so i don't understand how the left portion of her upper clothing got tore but the left part of that coat didn't I, I feel like my brain tries to give me an answer and then there's no answer like it's, i feel like all the yeah i feel like all the clothes seem consistent with getting dragged across the road mm -hmm. in a way, you know under a car yeah yeah that the especially the jeans and, and and when you say buy a car we're talking about her car right and that's her car. Yes. yeah okay yeah. that's yes. fine just for the for the noob in this whole situation here that that would make total sense that would completely explain the blood under the wheel arch as well yes so had then, they, then had... wait wait wait, 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 wait then, oh, sorry would that not Go mean, ahead. would that, now just bear with me, my brain's coming alive. So if, if she's gone, let's, let's say she's not driving, right, because, and is there a possibility they're chasing her with her car, someone's chasing her with her car? No. No, it's, no. it's not going to have happened like that. She's definitely went out of a window. That, are we, is that, I tell you what, Kim, No. Just, no, just, she did not go out her window. Just, just. My daughter was not in, no. Go ahead. What? What what do you think between the time of the last call to her sister and her losing her life? What you don't have to name any names. What do you think was the series of events that played out in your opinion? What is your because you are the most educated guess in the world on this? And I just there was something I'll tell you right now there was something going on in the car because when Julia was talking to Toby Julia Julia was tough okay yeah. she she had been in fights she she was a tough girl and she did not cry and certainly would not cry over another female you know saying something to her so for Julia to break down, it was something that really had Julia upset. And I don't know what it was, but I don't know if she was told to get out of the car. I, mean, I can't see my kid walking, you know, that late at night on the interstate just because she's mad. I don't know if she was told to get out, if she said, stop the car, I want out. I do know there was no dirt on Julia's feet. She hadn't been walking. Okay. She certainly didn't have her shoes on. The ones they claimed she was thrown out of were actually shoe boots. They go above the ankles and you have to wiggle them off, but they claim she was. It's so confusing. Have you personally, Kim, ever been able to get the car up on a lift and look under it? Um, not a lift, but we've been under it, and that's how I know about the blood. Yeah. Is there any evidence of maybe, like, a clothing fiber that you've seen? That, I would, it would be, I have not seen anything stick out. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's like I told my dad. I said, if she went under that car, there has to be, you know, it's, it's if a hair got caught mm -hmm. It's hard to wash away a hair that's gotten caught, like wrapped around Absolutely. a screw or something. 
I I just need I just need a lawyer to have it tested. Because no matter what we get tested, it won't hold up in court. Hmm. Oh, it's it's a really upsetting and puzzling kind of confusing case and the more we delve into it the more we go down the rabbit hole the more questions arise there doesn't seem to be any answers to be honest it just seems to be more questions and you're i take it you're ready to go i mean you're ready if you know we can try and do something to help speed the lawyer system up uh, situation up surely there's going to be some young buck out there that will take this case on and try and take on the system. Um, oh, it's harder than what we think because it's not an issue of somebody that's just willing. I mean, they have to really believe in it and they have to have no fear of what's going to happen as far as retaliation from, you know, the police. Yeah. Yeah. And somebody was just asking, was there any fingerprints found? I think you said this the other night that there was possibly one other person's fingerprints okay, found. Okay, that... I was looking at the DNA report again. That was um, in my photos. It's sample number 15. And if you go across, and the only way I would know to be sure of this is if somebody was a lab tech and could tell me. But the way it appears to me is, is that little speck of blood is it has Julia's DNA in it, but also somebody else's. See the, what does that mean? It's just it it just gets so confusing. It really does. Mhm. Mm it really does. I do apologize, everybody, for these long pauses when my as my brain tries to confute, like sort of compute all of this, um, because it is it is just more confusion, and I think there's no denying what you've come forward with this evening. I can see it. Over 270 people in the stream can see it. And I just, I don't understand how this is still not a reopened case. This is sh surely, surely there's something... You know, how, many, how many cases have you ever seen where one cop would snitch on others without, you know, not having body cam proof or yeah, eyewitnesses? Yeah, just zero. That's right. So it's up to me. It's not going to be somebody in the system come forward and say, hey, yeah, you know, I worked in that department and I know this, this and this. And it, it was kind of a joke by some people and friends that were involved. Oh, sure. The whole, you know, Wood County Sheriff's Department plotted to cover this up. No, not the whole Sheriff's Department. But the ones that didn't have anything to do with it, that knew what was up, they're not going to snitch. They're not going to tell on the other ones. No. No. So that's it then. It has to be a lawyer. It has to be a lawyer that's that, that gets brought in for you to take this forward. And, you know, we'll put our heads together and we'll try and figure out some way of mass alerting a bunch of lawyers and trying to figure out something. But, I mean... Is there any other route for you to go down other than taking this all to court? Is there anything else you can mm -hmm. do? No. Because um I want I want these people in jail. You know, my my kid did not do anything to deserve this. My my other daughter did not. She should never have had to go through this to see her sister like that. Yeah. What we have been through, the crap, you know, my if if this isn't dealt with but before my parents pass away, I, I'm going to be pissed. Yeah. Your dad, of course, he was a massive part in all this. And oh, bless his heart. You know, that man cried every single night for months. He would cry. And I, I saw my dad cry once in my life, and that was when his mother died. Yeah. And up until Julia died, and he cried every night. It's so sad, and the wave and ripple effect of a loss like this is, it's it's unfathomable to people that haven't gone through something like it, and it affects everyone, and it's truly, it's it's horrible. No no parent should ever uh, have to outlive their, their children, and 
you know, like I say, everyone in the side chat throughout all of this has been nothing but supportive and showing you love and just wanting to know what they can do and how they can help. So everyone, please do make sure that you check out the link in the description to the Justice for Julia page. Uh, you go over there and you follow the story closely and just stay up to date with everything. We're going to be uh, continuing this series um, over the next sort of week anyway. And hopefully... Um, Kim, we hadn't discussed you coming back, but you're obviously 100% welcome to sort of help us uh, understand the beginning of the evening a little bit more and just leave us with all the facts so that when we when we close the first season of this, we're, we're up to date with uh, everything that's sort of important, if, if if you're still okay with doing that. Yeah, if I'm if I'm not working. Of course, yeah. No, this is, like I say, it's, it's everyone's... Uh, really eager just to try and understand everything and I think this evening and uh, with the last show where we're focused on the car and we've, we've sort of focused on the events that you know were the, the latter part of the evening and it's it has painted a completely different picture and it has certainly put some big red circles around some of the people involved in this way more than others and mm -hmm it's almost undeniable and what i'd like to talk to you a little bit about just before uh, we start winding down is there was one of the individuals there was uh somebody had sent me a, a screenshot of something where seemingly they went home and had said to their mother that they just killed their friend and that's why they wanted to get a lawyer is that no that's not true that's not true that just all what happened was um Kristen got a lawyer but it was around i'd say five o'clock no no it might have been earlier than that oh you've dropped again kim we can't hear you just to let you know you just if you want to drop out and then rejoin again you can do that um just don't want you to uh, be sat there talking without us being able to hear you are you still there christina oh yeah you're still here that's fine <laughs> and no i was just making sure it wasn't my system yeah. <laughs> the system at my end that was all i almost said something i almost said something that's okay we'll give her uh, another a few seconds yeah. just in case uh our system's cut and she can't hear me speaking to her uh, kim just to reiterate we cannot hear you again just uh, in case you want to rejoin and come back in uh, and i'll remind you again in just a second but everyone that's out in the side chat thank you uh for like i say for following this story and for keeping up to date with it all uh anyone who does want to support the channel links are in description make sure that you uh, follow me on mixer we uh just got a mixer partnership and we're going to be doing a lot of streaming over on mixer so the link is down in the description and uh, make sure you follow me on instagram because that's the thing and and twitter because that it also exists and there's you know i post things and uh, you know do it it's great it's free click that button kim you have returned it's uh, yeah. the the cursed the cursed internet broadcasting i do apologize um so just going the thing back, with yes. the lawyer yes absolutely. okay i believe the sheriff's department was notified that she had an attorney around five o'clock i could be wrong on that but i know that um her dad got her the attorney and that same night, around 8, she actually went with her dad, her dad's girlfriend, and a friend of hers to where I work to eat dinner. No, they never. Yes, they did. Oh, what a so, slap in the face. Yeah, so the manager mm -hmm. called the cops because at the time, they um, everybody thought that, you know, this girl still had not talked to the sheriff's department and the sheriff's department was looking for her. so they called the sheriff's department and a woman officer came and told the manager that they could not do anything unless there were bruises or scratches or cuts on her and um, could not approach her and that she had an attorney what what Hang on, just, 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 hang on. 
just go back to, the, to they couldn't approach her because she didn't have any bruises or scratches on her yeah what does that what, what does that mean the pol that's what the police said yes what yes. does that mean what we couldn't we couldn't yeah nah uh, nah can't approach her mate no bruises or scratches who's mm -hmm. who what what no that was i'm not going to approach her uh, no, i know but at least be yeah. a fucking man and say that mm -hmm. don't just mm -hmm. be like oh i can't our hair's not orange do you know what i mean like <laughs> it doesn't make any fucking sense what uh -uh. oh the headache's kicking in again the frontal lobe is like none of this none of this makes sense oh man it you really you doesn't... don't understand what kind of area we live in I really want I mean, to fly out and find out, Kim, if I'm being honest with you. I feel like I need to go and knock on the policeman's doors and be like, Hiya, I'm Ron. Really confused about a couple of hundred points in this case. Yeah. Is there any, um, like, what what is it we've got here? Uh, Viking, what's that thing we've got in the UK where if I want to know something about the government, I can just apply for it? Freedom of something act. Is there no, like... Yeah, we do. We do. Okay, right. We all need to start applying for that. We all just need to spam the government <laughs> with access to the case. Once we've all got it, we'll just all fly out and we'll just sit outside the sheriff's office. And then once the papers arrive, we'll be like that. Hiya! And that's, that, that's what we'll do. Until the yeah. lawyer comes forward, that's the plan, kids. Okay? Because what, I mean, other than that, what, I mean, I suppose we could all just put our flight money together and then actually just get you a lawyer. That would probably make more sense. But until then, that is a logical plan. If we Can we not make the newspapers listen? Can we not do that? I mean, that's not you doing anything. So it's not like you're interfering in anything. It's just some mad bastard off of YouTube. Because Well, and Kim, Kim, I know what type. Are you there, Kim? I'm listening. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I know what type of area you're in. I've actually driven through your area. I used to live up in Hudson, Ohio. And... Mm -hmm. uh, went down to West Virginia often uh, for concerts and whatnot. But yeah, I know how they are. Is this, is, this one of, a... is this one of these places where we're all going to get shot? Like, is this one of these like small towns where they're just going to come out and be like, no, and just start gunning us down? Because I'm like, just so we know, do you know what I mean? But what other, other than a massive protest, and I mean, let's, let's put it in real terms, other than a, on a protest in a public way, to get the media attention back on this i i don't know what media attention you think would be interested because the local media here wants nothing to do with julia's case anymore the um, newspaper will not put an article in about julia's case specifically and the news i had um told them before about being on a national television show with this mm -hmm. And they would not contact me back. And then this last national television show, they were told about, and they still didn't want to hear. So all we need to do is find some new friends. That's basically what you're saying. You have no local friends, yes. police, media, they're all a bunch of dicks. All right, that's how we sum it up in Scotland. Excuse my terminology, right? That's so we right. just that's, need that's to find true. you some new friends. We can do that. No probs. We'll, 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 let's not spout out any craziness but it can't it's we've got a figure in the whole of america there's bound to be one mad bastard reporter one crazy lawyer and just they're all probably going to be in their very early 20s and really really hungry for something right i'll prepare you for that but surely mm -hmm. surely they're out there you're you're out there okay you could be listening now you could be the friend of someone you know what I'm saying. It's this is twenty fucking twenty, not nineteen fucking forty. We are the new media generation. We control the planet, and these mm -hmm. fuckers aren't going to get away with covering up a young girl's fucking death. So, yeah, I'm triggering myself, Kim. I'm very sorry. I, I feel like I'm all, I'm emotionally involved now, and I really need to start. We need to start figuring out actual solutions. Have yeah. you tried contacting congressmen or anybody maybe higher up in your... There were government? letters sent mm -hmm. out with that, uh -huh. but um, I'm afraid to, um, depending, because, I mean, you got to remember, like, we contacted the FBI after this yeah. happened, and my dad went, he made an appointment, which was a big mistake, because apparently they had called 
to find out what was going on with this case from the sheriff's department. <laughs> because when my dad got there, the FBI agent had actually stuck out his badge and, and yelled at my dad, do you see this? Do you see this? You're in my house now. And my dad started to talk and he interrupted him yelling at him. They were all drunk. Oh, that's disgusting. And then, um, so my dad finally, finally got the man to look at the pictures my dad had of the, um, he was scrolling, the, he was flipping through them, the FBI guy was. And when he got to the picture of the windshield, he said, something doesn't look right with that. And then he said, I would look into this, but I don't want to lose my job. Oh, great. This is great. Okay. I, 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 okay. So, yeah, this is this is craziness. The, obviously, the police official report is madness. We need to, everyone that's watching this, we need to seriously come up with some solutions now. This is, let, let's let's start gearing these conversations towards a resolution that is doable. There's got to be a way of getting more attention on this. Obviously not from within Kim's town, but someone's going to know someone who knows someone who knows someone for as long as this series is up. So just in case someone's watching this in six months' time, you'll still be able to contact Kim via the link in the description to her Facebook page. And we're going to come up with something, Kim. Okay. Yeah, and I'm, I'm going to talk to my dad. He's retired police um, from California. I'm going to talk to him and see, you know, what other... I mean, crazy. No idea is too crazy. I'm already on no. Elon Musk's Twitter right now, emailing him. Okay. okay. So just no idea is too crazy, people. Okay, it's Hail Mary time. Every idea <laughs> is worth looking at. Yeah, anybody that you could think to write, write them. And if, the, if we get enough people, hey, what about change.org? Have you ever looked into that? Oh my god. Do you know I'm going to make a oh. I'm going to make I'm going to make a new website like change.org that's just called fucking can we just hurry up with a change please dot .com. It's 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 we yeah. yeah. Signing website stuff is great. I mean, don't get me wrong, it it, it gives you just some throwing sort of, stuff out there, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think the first thing you need to do Kim is consider your need for funding for all of this okay we need to figure out how we're going to get the press and how we're going to get legal action on your side you need to get some funding in so that you're able to pay for lawyers and push for this and all the rest of it and you, you i think between uh, us all putting our heads together we'll be able to figure something out something yeah, you scream loud enough they have to listen eventually oh yeah oh yeah this is this is it i mean the social medias and all of this stuff is where it's at and you know i've got some fairly interesting um heavy heavy influencer friends shall i say um and i need to be speaking to them as well because my channel's tiny so if we can if we can get this started here, if I can get a bigger channel involved, we'll do it. And I wouldn't bring anyone to your uh, metaphorical doorstep, Kim, that wasn't in the inner circle of trust, if that doesn't make sense. So I wouldn't suggest mm -hmm. anyone to you that is sketchy, shall we say. But I've got a couple of people in mind, and they're massive, mass, like massive, massive. So it's just all about exposure, and then someone seeing it, and it just it's snowballing. I'm all about laying seeds and whatever we can do to sort of make a solution start to grow we'll do that if especially um for your dad as well because as you said you want to try and get this done um well you well well they're all with us so that's what we'll try and do for sure and i can't make any promises but you know the internet is mental and once it gets its teeth sunk into something m crazy things can happen so uh mick armstrong thank you very much mate um i'll f i'll make sure that cat gets sent over to the uh to the facebook page and i just want to say to uh, to kim and to christina you know, just as we're winding down, is there anything else you want to touch on this evening that you feel that we've maybe not touched on and you want to make sure that it is mentioned this evening? No. no I can't not. think of anything. No probs. I think tonight's been a good focus point. I think uh, your 
new evidence is damning to say the least and I don't understand how it's not going to be the the siren that makes people listen from now on if that makes sense because they've no choice surely it doesn't take an idiot to work it out like I say I'm pretty sure if I sat down with my five year old son and told him all this he'd be like no mm -mm, I'm five and I can see through this uh, mm -hmm. so Kim if uh, you want to let me know uh, on Facebook if you want to come back again and what night you can do that you don't have to tell us uh, just now if you don't want to commit to anything just now but you know that you're always welcome to come back and I think uh, we would really appreciate just a definitive rundown of what happened at the start of the night and who she was with and all the rest of it and that sort of gives us that block uh, of, of the storyline <laughs> But again, don't don't feel pressure to commit to anything live on air. We'll 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 talk on uh, we'll talk on your Facebook page. So don't worry about that. And okay. uh, of course, Christina, you're welcome back for all of Thank this. You. Uh, yes, I'll um, let everybody know on the community tab, which is on the main uh, f uh, front page of the of the face of the Facebook page of the YouTube page, uh, when the next live stream will be. Obviously, if you are subscribed to the channel, uh, if you're not, make sure you are subscribed with the notification bell switched on. You will get a notification of uh, when the next stream will be. And uh, for those of you who are fans of the channel, we have our latest documentary that will be released on Valentine's evening, Red Rooms number two, reevaluating our entire thought process on Red Rooms and what they mean. Uh, very, very exciting. Well, okay, ask about the, the GoFundMe. Yeah, uh, Kim, people are asking about would you accept a GoFundMe for your, uh, your lawyer fees and things like that? Have you considered setting up something like that? Yes, but there is something I needed to get this in, there's a couple of accounts on change.org that are for Jalea, but those are fraudulent accounts. Yeah, I've seen that on your page. Oh. Yeah, don't sign up to anything you find online. Uh, everybody, do not do that. I think someone's just said merch and donations. I think you want to get a, a Justice for Julia t shirt or something made. I can help you with all of getting all that set up. And there's literally no setup fee for, for the sites that, that I use that I can recommend for you. And at least it gives you something to start getting funding coming in. And again, we're, we're live on the internet. We're not busy. We're not having a freaking brainstorm about, about that. But just understand, we are here for you today, tomorrow, six months, a month, whenever you have an, a, a, something that you think we can help with we are here whether it's a bit of design or putting together a, a graphic or or anything we are and especially when we end the series that's not where it ends um with us we're wanting to continue a couple of you know two three months down the road pick up again see where we're at and just keep this going because until you're satisfied we're not satisfied so that's probably going to be a long relationship kim <laughs> until okay. this is dealt with so um i hope that's okay and thank you everyone again that's been uh, out in the side chat who's supported all of this and who has uh, really you know d made me proud as the community leader you've all been really really good my mods thank you for keeping the 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 lion's dead that is the side chat under control dan true love's joined us welcome sir how are you and uh thank you to everyone who's been helping and emailing and sending information over it's been nothing but support and love and it's like i say it makes me very very proud when you're uh when you've got your community and they are all such awesome people so and a lot of that's down to you as well kim your community is um a lot of people have come from your community and it's uh, it's been a good mix so we'll let you guys know uh, exactly when Kim will be back when we'll be continuing this series and I know that a lot of you who were looking for the video that I took down were asking where it went and it was taken down because I didn't want to have uh, a video that had minor issues major issues and points where I just wasn't correct for someone to then listen to that and then have to watch another video just to have it all corrected so it was just easier to um, take that information away and then we'll re we'll re-upload or we'll we'll do a night where we're talking about the, the start of the evening just so that we've got uh, a consistent timeline of uh, story if that makes sense 
But we have reached the end of tonight's show. Unless Christina or Kim has anything they would like to add to any of this before we go. I know I've already asked you something similar, but feel free to um, say anything that you would like. And remember, everyone, do go and check out the, the Facebook page. The link is in the description. But yeah, Kim or Christina, if you would you like, is there anything you want to say before we leave, Kim, uh, before we go? No, I just want to say thank you again for having me on. Oh, no, thank you for being here. We're... Um, at your service so it's um not a, not an issue believe me we are yeah uh, i just want to uh, thank kim too for being on here yeah that's, that's how i feel so okay great well thank you everyone for joining us thank you everyone once again for the support thank you to my patreons the channel members if you want to become a channel member there is a button that says join if you're on a iphone or a apple device due to politics that button will not appear on your device and you will need to go through the link tree which is in the description all of the links to do with this channel you will get in the link tree whether it's the merch store or the the twitter and of course the new mixer partnership make sure you come and join us on mixer uh, everything will be kicking off within the next week um me and viking we have a show starting there and dan and i have got some stuff happening as well and we're going to be experimenting we're even um looking into some live music performances and some uh electronic music producers coming in and doing sets uh, in the evenings so there's a lot going to be happening a lot of varied content on mixer it's going to be a lot of fun and of course some games uh, very very much some games looking at you viking so happy days and thank you once again for joining us make sure you go and check out the lava girl thank you for joining and uh, for signing up to membership that is fantastic and listen everyone we will see you on regardless of when this next stream is what day is it it's wednesday so i will probably see you guys saturday night or before then there'll definitely be something happening on the second channel before then and there's a, a the the documentary dropping on the 14th so lots happening if i don't speak to you all live before valentine's day have a lovely valentine's day okay and uh yeah Thank you very much. And for me, as always, guys, Ron Swanson, be safe out there. Hey, Ron.